They rely on rainfall for their primary source of uh, water rather than, than going into the ground, you know. No, but visibility is very poor and a very bad day to be flying today. Anyway, how are you? All right? Things are gradually getting back to normal at uh, the Angry Practice. We had a, a problem yesterday, the sort of thing you have to take in your stride if you're thinking of becoming a practice owner. And here's yet another thing that could possibly happen to you. My uh, light is on a pole, you know, it's on a, on a light stick. <laughs> and uh, you can tell my level of uh, engineering and technical sophistication, can't you, from, from the fact that it's a light pole. Anyway, uh, it uh, got sort of uh, very, very stiff and very difficult to turn. So I thought, right, what do you do, you know, when something needs a bit of lubrication, stick some WD-40 on it. So I, um, I decided to squirt a bit around the junction, but me being Mr. Thorough, you know, wanting everything done to the highest quality standard possible, decided to see if I could lift the pole off so that I could lubricate the joint properly. And uh, sure enough, the, in the middle of the pole there's a connector, like a block, uh, which is just two blocks push into each other. And uh, just the act of lifting the pole off disconnected the connector. So there I'm left holding one pole that's now obviously not working because it's disconnected. And um, no way of reconnecting the connectors because they're, they're, they're like, you know, one end is stuck inside the pole. So we tried to get this connector out of the pole, but whoever wired it up had done it extremely weirdly. And we couldn't get it out, so in the end I had to cut the wires off at both ends of the pole and nip down maplins and get some bullet connectors and connect them all back up again with a bullet connector. So uh, funnily enough, now we've got you know like a, a vastly improved functionality on the pole um, because not only is it properly lubricated and not only is it now easily removed uh, because I'm not worried about these connectors coming apart because I can reach them now and disconnect them and connect them together again. But lastly, um, the guy, the last guy who did it, had done the negative and the positive, but he hadn't. Uh, connected the neutral, the, the earth. So the light wasn't earthed. So, so I've managed to reconnect the earth, so that's good. Of course this wasn't picked up by the CQC. Who are going, they go around looking at the stickers on your plugs, but they don't go around with uh, these uh, three pin testers, do they? Testing your sockets or uh, finding out whether all your equipment is double insulated or would, uh, you know, if if, uh, if you had a short circuit in, not I mean, not that there's likely to have a short circuit in a dental chair that's just, you know, looks like something out of the film Brazil with uh, pipes all crammed <laughs> together behind panels, water running alongside electricity, running alongside uh, compressed air, you know. So, oh no, that would never, uh, that would never short out and electrify the lamp for the first unwitting dentist who touched it no 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 so anyway it's all safer now and, and working now but this is the engineering part isn't it you know you have to if you're if you run a dental surgery you dentistry is probably like <laughs> the easiest bit this easiest thing you do the dentistry the rest of it is the um, IT support and the um, marketing budgeting accountancy And uh, HR and uh, tech, tech support as well, you know. So, Maplins is we're very good actually. We've got a Maplins just around the corner, so it's amazing. Um, I have to keep the toolkit in the car though, that's another tip. You're going to need a toolkit, you're going to need one at work, and you're going to need one at home, and you're not going to want to buy two of everything. And even if you did try and buy two of everything, the, the few things that you didn't have two of, they'd be the things that you'd need and they would be at the other place. So I keep talking in the car. 
because obviously the car's usually where I am and so then if anything goes wrong then I can I know I've got my tools the very few occasions where I've sort of left the toolkit at work or the heating's gone off at home and so we've had no heating because I can't I cannot be bothered to drive back to the surgery to get the toolkit having just driven back from the surgery then to the surgery then from the surgery again that's like two hours out of my life so I'm not going to bother with that just not if I'm going back the next day it's a human nature isn't it or if you leave the toolkit at home then you can bet your life you're going to have some sort of flood based event at work that's going to require a spanner or a screwdriver or a plaster or some some black insulating tape or something that uh, you haven't got and no other buggers got a toy it's no use we live in a I mean we work in a business center and it's no use going to the unit next door and saying have you got like a six inch screwdriver or uh, you know they just don't uh, most people, I mean, when I bought the practice, it came with a toolkit, but it was just basically crap, you know? It was everything the guy who sold me had just kept there because, not because it was any use, but because it was no use in his toolkit and he just needed somewhere to throw, bung it without throwing it away. Anyway, back to normal, busy doing lots of molar root treatments. If you want a recommendation for a piece of kit that's really useful, I would say a pulp tester is a fantastic piece of kit. It's a, I've got one, I use it every day. And uh, they don't have to be expensive, you can buy them off of eBay. I'll, you know, they won't be CE marked, probably Tony Reid will go spare. BDIA will send the equipment police round and have you locked up. But, uh, <laughs> it's, <laughs> I had a guy in yesterday and he had a uh, he had a gun boil so um, so right, I knew this tooth was dead right okay so, so but I still use the pulp test on it why okay why did I use a pulp test on it go on pause the video and just because it'll be more interesting if you guess the real reason why I used the pulp tester on a tooth which is obviously dead did you pause okay I'll tell you and the reason is that this guy's as far as he's concerned, he's got a gun boil on it, it's draining nicely, it's not symptomatic. He thinks he's come in because it, he's got a metallic taste in his mouth, funnily enough. Well, I'd imagine was the pus coming out of the gun boil, I don't know, but we thought it might have been decay, but in fact his oral hygiene is pretty good. But this tooth's got a crown on it. But it did have enough, fortunately, <laughs> it had been done so badly that there was a bit of the tooth showing, buckily. So what I did was I put the pulp tester on his um, on his eight, and we got up to about 38, and then on his uh, six, and we got up to about 38, and then I put it on the seven, and it went up to 65 plus, where well, which basically means it's dead. And uh, so, and I showed him, I showed him the readings. I say, look, you know, there we are. Okay, we've got 38 out of them, and I've got 38 out of them, and I've got 65 plus on this one. It's obviously dead as a dodo. It's obviously dead as a dodo. And it's tangibility, okay? He can see the results of my tests. He can, like, it's like when I had a liver biopsy and it came back and it said, I've got fibrosis. And I said to the guy, he said, oh, I'm sorry to say you've got fibrosis of the liver. And I said, do you mind if I see that? <laughs> and it wasn't because I didn't trust him or I thought he was lying or anything. It's because I wanted to make it tangible to myself, yeah? I wanted to, I wanted to, Every time I think about my liver, I think to myself, I've got, I've got liver fibrosis because I know I've seen the test results. <laughs> I've just got to take someone's word. Like when I, like about 40 years ago, someone told me I've got wet macular degeneration. And I'm like, oh my god, I'm going to go blind. I'm going to do. I need to go on a tour of the world's art galleries before I go blind and all this. You know, it was really when you're a bit younger and you hear that something might be wrong with you you're like oh god this is the thing I'm gonna die of you know this is me that's it I've had it now it's downhill <laughs> and then and then nothing happens you know in like 30 40 years later I'm still my eyesight's just as good as it was and he did say to me it's very early he said you know look you know someone told me this and then and then someone 
later I said to him, look, you know, I've been told I've got these signs of wet macular degeneration, degenerative disease. And he looked at my eyes and he said, look, you know, this is, you know, I don't know who told you that, but, you know, if you have got it, then it's just ridiculously early. So, but the, your, the tangibility is the, is the point I wanted to try and, uh, trying to make. So it made it tangible. So windy today. So what was I talking about? I said the pulp tester. Oh god. My memory's degenerating. I don't know about my. Ah, oh. my lovely nurse. She's lovely as well. Right, well, if I think of what I was talking about, and I probably will when I rewind it, then I'll finish it. All right. Otherwise, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.